this video, we will be going over the four basic keys that every leader, no matter what level, should have in their front pocket. Let's get into it. Hey, before we dive into it, I just wanna make sure that you click that subscribe button so you and I can both take this journey called leadership together. All right, now let's get into it. Basic key number one, leaders must think differently. So this is what I'll tell you. Remember back when you were a kid, your thought process was a little bit different. Your worry was about coloring and staying in between the lines. And that helped you to connect the dots when you were tracing your numbers and letters when you went to the next grade. And then they started introducing combinations of numbers, tens and twenties and thirties. And then it started to get into adding, subtracting, then you got into multiplying. Your thought process had to change with the years that went on. So hopefully in the position that you are currently in, you are not the same person that you once were day one, month one, year one. Our thought process should constantly be improving. Not just problem solving, but thinking, how do I make this process better? How do I make this process faster? How do I make myself better? When you can start to think differently, it makes a world of difference. Now, you might be saying, hey, I'm in this new position, I have led before, but nothing at this level, and this is new to me, I'm a little scared, how do I do it? Well, thinking different is our key basic number one. Whether you're a new leader or an experienced leader, your thought process or your thinking has to level up and take that for exactly what it is. Think like your boss, and this is what I mean by that. So when I first started to work at a specific job, I was just a staff, bottom of the barrel staff. And I stayed at that level for about a year before I advanced to my boss's position, which was a site lead. Now, the reason why I made that jump is because out the gate, I started to think differently. I started to think at this level. And that all came from something that I learned in the military. As a United States Army veteran, I was taught in the military to stop acting like your rank and start acting like the rank that you want to be. Kind of like the old saying, dress for the position that you want. So our sergeants used to tell us, if you're a PFC, which is an E3, start acting like a specialist, which is an E4. And once you promote to an E4, you've already graduated to that level. Stop acting like that and start acting like an E5, like a sergeant. And when you can start to do that, they want to see the potential in you. It's the same thing with your thought process. Start thinking like your boss. If you were your boss, how would your job be different? What would you do differently in your job if you had the thought process like your boss? So once I became a site lead, I started to think like the manager. And then three years later, I became the manager. Then I started thinking like a director because my thought process changed. I'll give you another example. When you're at the ground level, you have a really good view on your job or on your house. But when you climb the ladder to step on top of your house, you can see more. You can see your neighbor's houses and don't be creeping on your neighbors because that's just creepy. But you have a bigger view. And if you were to go on top of the mountain, you have even a broader view. Can you see more? Absolutely. And that's what thinking to the next level is. Your thinking allows you to see more. So. Just to refresh, basic key number one, think a little bit differently than you currently are. Basic key number two, leaders listen. Now, I'm a huge believer that we were created and made with two ears and one mouth, so we're able to listen a lot more than we speak. Sometimes leaders that are too hungry for power will just talk, 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 and nobody wants to follow a talker. They want to follow somebody who inspires them. That is a completely different video. The other thing that people want to follow is somebody who understands. You cannot understand unless you listen or watch. And so these next two will go over listening and watching, but this key number two is specifically about listening. Now, as you move up to the next level, you have separated yourself from coworkers, colleagues, even some of those coworkers might be friends of yours, and now you have elevated yourself to this next level. You are no longer a coworker, but now a boss, and we'll get into that in another video as well, but you have to be able to listen. So just go back, remember where you came from. Were you ever upset, had any gripes about your boss or how people were doing things? You need to listen to your employees. Your employees are at the ground level. They're in the trenches of what is happening. You need to understand what are their needs and wants, and you'll never know that 
if you're always talking, you have to listen. Also, you have to be able to pair that with listening to your higher up, your boss, and what are their expectations. Make sure that you communicate with your boss of what are the expectations from me and my team. And then pair that with the understanding and the listening of your staff and their needs and their wants. Now, it's not always going to be a happy marriage of the two. However, if you fail to listen, you will be known as a boss that just barks out orders who doesn't understand their people. And let me tell you, those people are working for you. So you wanna make sure that they work with you because if they work with you, then they'll work for you. Basic key number three is learn. Wait, time out, leadership question of the day. What is something that you have learned from either somebody above you or below you that has stuck with you that helped your road to success in leadership? Let's communicate that and drop those gems down in the comments below so we can add value to each other. Now let's get back to it. Basic key number three is learn. This goes hand in hand with listen. When you listen to those needs and the wants of the people above you and below you, you're able to learn something new. I'm a big believer in always listen and learn for what the lesson is supposed to be. There's gonna be times in your trials and the tribulation of the things that you're going through where stress sets in. A bonus tip, if you will, is to always look for the lesson that you need to learn. Now, this has been huge with my growth as a leader. There's times where I was stressed out, upset at other people, upset at the people above me, upset at the people below me, until I learned this lesson of what is the lesson that I need to learn. And once I understood that and I pointed the finger back at myself to see how do I grow from this, I would become that much better. And I learned from my staff of what they wanted from me, what their needs were. It's not just the needs and wants of your staff, but learn who your staff are. It's not just Susie who works in accounting. It's just not Bill who is the custodian. It is Bill, the family of five, who works his butt off to get the job done. The one that bends over backwards for you no matter what. The one that just sits and talks to you about absolutely nothing for 10 minutes and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I have jobs to do. Oh my gosh, I have work to do. And all Bill wants to do is have a conversation with you. If you really learn and understand the people under you, you'll start to understand that Bill is by himself as a, let's say the custodian to stick with that example. He doesn't talk to a lot of people. He gets orders and he has to, he has to fulfill those orders or those requests and he might be working by himself and all he wants is a little bit of a conversation. Learn who your staff are and learn what their needs are. When you learn the heart of your staff, then that will tap in into their mind and that'll start to build up your relationship with them. So basic key number two and three go together in listen and learn who your staff are. As a second part of leaders learn, they learn by asking great questions. Anyone can ask a question. Good leaders ask good questions, but great leaders ask great questions. A general question would be, hey Stephanie, do you need any help? A good question would be, hey Stephanie, how can I help you today? A great question would be, hey Stephanie, give me one thing that you totally have a grasp on, like you totally get, you've mastered this, and you're proud of your production today. They give you their answer. Hey, give me something that you're struggling with that maybe is not as easy as that first thing that you talked about. And then once they give you that answer, you could then say, give me two ways that you would love to receive help, either by myself or a coworker. And if they don't have an answer for you, you can easily say, I wanna check in with you after lunch, and I'll ask you again, and hopefully you have an answer then, but I wanna be able to help you so your work is not so stressful or frustrating. And now I'm able to get way more out of my employee because I ask great questions. For example, a lot of us parents will ask our kids, how was school today? And they'll say, good, fine, and I'm not okay with that. I am not okay with having good or fine, which is a mediocre answer. So I'll ask my kids, on a scale of one to 10, how good was your day or how great was your day? They might say, uh, it's a seven. So then I'll ask them, let's say it was a horrible day, it was a zero. What great thing happened that bumped it all the way up to a seven? And then they'll tell me, oh, during recess this happened, or I started, I talked to that girl that I finally liked, and apparently she likes me back, or I won a prize today, or I got an A on my paper, whatever it is. Then I'll follow up with this next question. Let's say it was a 10. 
what bad thing happened that dropped it down to a seven. Then they'll say, oh, I got my name on the board or I tripped or somebody made fun of me in class. And so now, because I've asked those great questions, I now know what great thing happened and what bad thing happened. And then I can speak to my child's heart and their well-being as opposed to a flatline question and answer of how was your day? Does that make sense? All right, so what did we learn? Great leaders ask great questions and when they receive those answers in those great questions, they learn. Key basic number four, lead by example. Nobody wants to follow somebody who cannot do the work themselves. And this is what I mean by that. Both in high school and in the military, I had a coach and I had a drill sergeant who taught me this lesson. When they were teaching us something, our coach or drill sergeant would go ahead and do that function themselves to show that they are competent in what they were showing us. It was a huge lesson in they're not going to just tell us something to do just to tell us. They were fully capable of doing something but wanted to teach us on how to do it. Our coach used to say, listen, I'm never gonna ask you to do something that I cannot do myself. However, when it comes to discipline, you're doing that on your own. So if we went to practice late and we had to run an extra mile, we would have to run the mile, not the coach. But if he wanted to do a workout with us or it was part of the routine of, all right, 50 push-ups, and some people were thinking, we can't do 50 push-ups, we just did 100 push-ups, he would do them with us to show, I'm not gonna ask anything of you that I cannot do myself. And so as leaders, we need to be able to do that too. Hey, let me show you how to do this. If they're doing something wrong, we can then jump in and say, hey, let me show you a little tip or trick that I know, and we lead by example. Let me tell you a quick story that I learned. There was a warehouse where the risk management team told the staff and the management team that the employees were at risk for being hurt and injury. And here's the reason why. The floor was dirty with trip hazards. And so they put up signs everywhere that said, please pick up the trash when you see it. And it didn't have much success. What did have major success was that the management team, when they would come in, instead of going straight to their offices on the second floor, they would take the long way and go through the warehouse floor, up the stairs, and then to their office. And what they did when they'd come in the morning was they welcomed everybody. Hey, good morning, how are you doing? And they would wave hi to everybody. But what they did was they picked up the trash can at the front door, and on their walk to their office, they would go and pick up trash all the way through the floor, up the stairs to their office and they would put it right outside their office. And instead of using the restroom that was so convenient right down the hall from them, they would go use the restroom down where the warehouse workers were so they can communicate with them yet again and also put in front of them the example. So they would use the restroom by carrying the trash can that they put outside their door, carry it down the stairs, throw trash away. Hey, how's it going? Do you guys need anything? Just taking a quick restroom break, throw stuff away. They would put it outside the restroom door, go inside, do their business, wash their hands, come out and when they would go back they would take that same trash can by the end of the first week the staff on the warehouse floor started to go from location to location with a trash can in their hand or picking up trash and throwing it away at their destination the warehouse floor ended up being spotless and the cleanest it had ever been in years within the first two weeks why because the management team started to lead by example so you can think differently, you can listen to your staff, you can learn from your staff, but it doesn't mean anything unless you do it. So lead by example. And that's it. So here is a quick communication recap. Leaders think differently. Leaders listen to their staff, both above and below. Leaders learn by asking great questions and leaders lead by example. And that's it. Thank you so much. My name is Juan Alvarado. Thank you for joining me here on the Raise the Bar channel where we raise the bar in leadership for everyone across the board. And remember to hit that bell icon to get notifications when we drop new videos. Thank you so much for joining me. Make sure that you click on this video where we discuss four things that people look for in a leader that they want to willingly follow. Click on this video that YouTube suggests that you should watch. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.